Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That, that, Feel my pain. Welcome to IXSVO with Brian Fischler and Ed Plumacher. Making it happen with voiceover accessibility. And now, here's Brian and Ed. Welcome back to yet another episode of IXSVO. Ed, this has been a fun one so far because we're dealing with the fun of technology here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's that's the beauty of tech. Tech, It'll drive you crazy because sometimes it all doesn't come together. You know, I could be the first person ever to have uh, one earbud uh, in one ear with a 3.5 millimeter jack and another earbud in another ear with the lightning jack <laughs> so I can hear my notes and do the show as well as hear you. This is kind of weird. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, hey, you know what? Right now it's working, so let's go with it. Exactly. It's working. So uh, i got some other new stuff over here as well, Ed. Yeah, what's that? I got myself a new keyboard. Really? What happened to your Mac Alley? I thought you loved that keyboard. I did love that keyboard, but uh, unfortunately, you know, like a lot of blind people out there or uh, people dealing with stressful lives, uh, I had my first meltdown in about five years, and... Uh, yeah, it was nice because it was home. It was when I was alone. I don't even know what really set it off, but uh, the keyboard, the Mac Alley, is officially dead. <laughs> <laughs> it sleeps with the fishes tonight, man. A little, oh, a little man. advice to the listeners: if you do have a meltdown, you know, because you will from time to time. I mean, this is my first one, like I said, in four years. Uh, do not bang the keyboard you love over and over on your desk because. Not only will the keys pop out, I think I killed the Bluetooth transmitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Did you find all the pieces, or were you stepping on keys for a couple of days? I was praying to God, Buddha, and Allah that Nash didn't need any of them. And fortunately, my cleaning lady got over here, and uh, we put a search party together. And we did find all the keys, and we got Humpty Dumpty put back together again. But like I said, I think I just... I. I killed it, man. I killed it, man. I was like Chris Farley and Tommy Boy. I killed my pet, you know, my favorite <laughs> keyboard, man. It's Yeah, uh, you know, it's tough. It's been a long time since I've had one of those meltdowns. I think I think I'm a I'm a good decade or more away from having had my last one, but uh you yeah, know, when they did happen, they were more frequent and uh you know, dealing with the blindness, sometimes things would just get out of hands and that you know that frustration level just just it's overwhelming, you know. And every now and then, I would uh, I would be known to lose it from time to time myself. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna blame it on the quitting of smoking. You know, uh, you <laughs> you know, I think smoking used to relieve that stress, and unfortunately, that stress since I've quit smoking uh, all boiled over, and my keyboard took the brunt of it. And uh, oh, I, I the next day, I was like, you know, so disappointed in myself. I was sitting there and I was just like looking at the keyboard I'm like what were you thinking and obviously <laughs> I wasn't thinking but like uh, you know unfortunately Mac Alley does not seem to be making keyboards anymore not even sure uh, if they're in business anymore although you did tell me you had a student find one on eBay right yeah I had a student uh, come in uh, actually last week and say she had just gotten a new keyboard she had ordered it was uh, she called it a, 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 a Macaulay <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you mean Mac Alley? Mac Alley? She goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, where did you get that? She goes, eBay. <laughs> Do you know where she lives? Because I either got to go rob it and steal it from her or see if they got another one on eBay. Yeah, she lives in New York here, but uh, she said that they're, you know, whoever had them was selling them. So um, I have to get you a link for that. What would happen if, like, next time you saw her, she said, Ed, strangest thing. I got robbed, but the only thing they took was my Mac Alley keyboard. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, well, I, yeah, I, you know, that's when, when I was looking, because I wanted to get one, I couldn't get one. So I bought the Canix, and I got the Canix aluminum Bluetooth keyboard. That, that sounds was, like something you get from smoking, Canix. Yeah, right? So, but, uh, you know, but I like it because it, you know it's got the brushed aluminum, so it matches it matches my MacBook Pro. So uh, it looks oh cool. yeah, because that's what's most important uh, 
to to a blind person is the keyboard matched the computer. Hey, blind or not, you gotta have style. Ah, screw style. But uh, well, I, I broke down and uh, you know I did my due diligence researching. You just can't find a keyboard that connects to more than three devices. Really, I think I saw one that connected to four devices. But it didn't. It had like two reviews, and it didn't sound very good. So I'm back uh, using a Logitech. I got the uh, Logitech K760. Uh, one thing about this keyboard, um, you know, it. I'm learning to like it. I think it's. It connects to three devices. Um, a couple things though. It's the first keyboard I've ever had that has round buttons. You ever use round a keyboard button. with round buttons? No, round buttons for for like the letter keys. Yeah, yeah. They're, everything's round. Okay. It's supposed to be uh, ergonomic or something with the typing, but uh, yeah, the keys are all round, so that, instead of the square keys, it's taken a little getting used to, but I do like the feel of it. That's something I do like. The other thing that I've noticed is as, you know, new designs and things are coming out, it took me an hour and a half to figure out how to open the battery case. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! So, yeah. so I guess it does not have uh, a lithium-ion battery. It it does not. It does not. Yeah, it takes. But uh, uh, Logitech does claim that the uh, two AAA batteries it takes will run for two or four years or something, which I find hard to believe. But hey, they're stating something like that. The other thing about this keyboard that is of major disappointment to me, and I have read that there is a way to remap some keys. Uh, Anybody that uses voiceover knows that you're using those control and option keys constantly. And on a Mac keyboard, control and option are right next to each other. And you have the function key to the left. Well, this keyboard has control, function, then option. (laughs) So that's not making my life. I have uh, set my keyboard for the first time ever to use the caps lock key as a modifier key. Uh, What I do like about this keyboard, though, is it does have the full number pad. So a lot of things that I was using uh, that had some, you know, stretches with the keyboard, I am now using the number pad to, to jump around and everything. And it's, you know, a smooth uh, feeling keyboard. It was about $70 US and uh, I like it, but there, there are a few kinks and it. it does take a little getting used to. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, I got to say, with the with the Canix that I have too, that that takes, uh, you know, the batteries uh, as opposed to having a rechargeable battery in it. And, uh, you know, I, I like, the idea of having rechargeable batteries, but you know, whatever. I guess I'll just uh, keep a keep a stock of energizers on hand. Yeah, yeah, you know, energizers and Twinkies, the uh, one two things that can survive a uh, nuclear attack by North Korea. <laughs> and to our and two the, North the Korean Twinkies, listeners, Twinkies, the Twinkies for sure. <laughs> that's true. That's true. If you are listening in North Korea or another country and do want to say hello. Reach on out to us, and you can say hello at uh, iaccessvo at gmail.com or on the Twitter thing there, uh, which is just iaccessvo. And, uh, Ed, we should probably mention something that's coming up at the end of the show. Would you like to uh, do the honors? Yeah, I think we're going, we're having our second contest. So uh, I know we're going to have a guest on who is uh, an app developer, and uh, he's been gracious enough to uh, provide us with some promo codes for some uh, some free apps, and we'll run a contest similar to what we did uh, last August and uh, early September with uh, BlindSquare. Yeah, so listen uh, to the interview, uh, which uh, will be coming up shortly, or. Uh, fast forward to the end of the show to find out how to uh, get in the contest. And uh, you know, Ed, uh, you know, we had Twitterific on last show, and uh, one thing we discussed briefly was uh, with Twitter, the native Twitter, uh, they were taking the username out of your 140 character count, and of course, this initially did not work with VoiceOver on the native Twitter app, but uh, impressively, uh, Twitter got it fixed pretty quickly, and we just thought we should mention it and give a shout-out to Twitter for actually fixing something uh, that wasn't working with VoiceOver in a fairly quick manner. There you go. Yeah, no, that that was good. Uh, it's good to see them being more responsive and uh, getting things done quickly, So, because I hate when something breaks. And it doesn't get fixed for a long time because after a while, I just move on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, there's nothing more annoying than that. Now, Ed, I got to ask you a personal question. Uh-oh. I'm getting personal here, man. Do you have a shower and do you have a window in your shower? <laughs> a window? In, what do you mean a window in my shower? 
do you have any kind of window that's in your shower, you know, with that? No. Uh, okay, I know what you mean. Do, no. You know, a little window. Have, I have a window in the bathroom, but it is not in the shower area. Okay, is it glossed over or anything? Or um, No, it has a you know sheer curtain and a regular curtain over it. But So, in other words, the neighbors can see uh, Ed's... Uh, uh, Nash and Bits, uh, you know, while he's doing his stuff in the bathroom. If you're dancing, I around. don't think so. But uh, you know, but it, it, you know, it's it's a high window, and it's you know, and, and uh, we have we have the proper coverings for it. So, what if uh, you have a NBA basketball player come over and use your bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> then the window's still, not that high. Still, Mine's I in my shower. That's, I, that's still not a problem. So, my, mine's in my shower, but it, I've got like one of those little windows in my shower that like. Uh, if you were in prison, you know, they would slide it open and stick your food through there. <laughs> it's one of those yeah. kind of windows. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you know, you, you can't, you can't like, my fat head wouldn't even fit out this window. So you know? is, is there a purpose to this conversation? There's a purpose because I think privacy is dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's officially dead. Get your calendars out. And I don't know, do we mark today's date that it's dead? Or I guess it really died a little while ago because... This first story uh, about per- privacy, or and I love the Brits that call it privacy, don't you? Privacy? Uh, sure. Hey, we have a lot of British listeners. I'm sure a lot of them say privacy. Yeah, I do. I do like it when it says privacy. So whether you're talking privacy or privacy, Ed, look up in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No. It's a camera flying around that you bought at the Apple store. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that she sent this article to me about the Hover Passport, Apple's new $499.95 drone. <laughs> really? 500 bucks, but uh, tell the good listeners uh, what 500 bucks will get you in fly time. <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> but, but, but they do give you two batteries, so... When it when it lands, you just pop a new one in, and you get another ten minutes. <laughs> it's it's kind of like nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties flying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, uh, it, it, I hear it can go up to seventeen miles per hour. So uh, I don't I don't know what the the range is on it in terms of being staying connected and controlling it, but. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be very, very intuitive, very user friendly, and uh, easy, easy to fly. And the Apple stores are st- are getting them in now. Are going to start doing demos. And right Im- the important store. question for you: What's that? With ten minute fly time, is it easy to land? <laughs> <laughs> Does it come with a parachute? I mean, five hundred bucks flying yeah, around. Yeah. When the battery dies, it lands quickly. <laughs> that's my point. That's a, that's that was a quick five hundred bucks, man. That, that that's quicker than losing five hundred bucks on black and roulette in Vegas. There you go. There you I, go. I'm curious about that. You know what happens after the ten minutes? Uh, you know, it's I guess you've got seven minute airtime, and then you know by the time you go into your flight and you get your your flight attendant making all the announcements to land the plane. You got to get that thing down in a hurry, I guess. <laughs> I guess, I guess. So uh, I can't wait until you call me up and say, Brian, you're not going to guess what I did today. I took out a drone with my cane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like you know, these things are getting they're 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 getting to be all over the place. It's 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 amazing. Yeah, you remember that '80s song? Who can it be at my door? Go away! Don't come around here no more. No. You don't remember that? Who can it nope. be now? This next story reminds me of that because this is just getting freakier and freakier. No more privacy. Who can it be? Did you hear this, what Google wants to do now? Yeah, I actually told you about this one because I saw this on the news this morning when I was getting ready for work. And they're talking about uh, Google Hire is considering selling you all of your search history to a potential employer that may be looking for you as a prospective employee. So, which I think is, 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 is it, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and good, to be fair, Google has already come out and denied that they were going to be selling your search history to a future employer. But this is raising, you know, cause you sign in with your Google account and they, it logs you in with your search history supposedly. And, uh, I don't know if you have to, you know, of course, this is your typical Google thing where it's brand new. So 
you have to be invited to join, you know, with the cool kids and everything, just like they initially did with Gmail, how they did with Google Docs, and what what what's Google's social network that was supposed to take on Facebook? I already forgot the name of it. <laughs> Google Plus. Yeah, I did not get into the Google Plus. Man, is anybody using that? Um, I actually do some postings on there, but not not much. Really, I did not know it still existed, and I thought it went the way of the dinosaurs. But uh, nope. Nope, still there. But yeah, no, this is, uh, you know, I'll tell you, more and more, I think it's time to just turn all, all my uh, all my devices on to VPN and leave them there. Yeah, you know, I think that's really the way to go. And I have been seeing a lot more posts on some of the blind tech boards asking about VPNs. And, uh, you yeah, know, it's, it's, if, you know, I'm going to want to continue to look for, you know, weird ass things at three o'clock in the morning, you know, like, where can I get a latka? Um, then uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to use a VPN if I ever want to get a job, that is. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's, you know, rumor season. We've been seeing a lot of rumors coming out about, you know, iOS, iOS 11. Uh, what's it? iPhone is it 8? iPhone 8, is that what we're getting up to? iPhone 8 is coming out. That's the rumor. Yeah, and uh, whatever they're going to call after Sierra, a lot of rumors going around. And you know, Ed, when I started reading this article, I was you know reading about augmented reality and uh, a new improved camera on the front of the phone, so you could take the greatest selfies ever invented, and uh, <laughs> you know stuff about games that aren't accessible. And it made me want to ask a question to the listeners. Have we peaked with Apple for blind people? Because it doesn't seem like they're innovating anything that would be useful to us. Well, that article did say the one key feature that is accessible for us and does work does work. Maybe it could be better is Siri, and they're going to be they're going to continue to develop Siri. They've hired a lot of uh, AI experts from different fields of, are coming in. Uh, it's working with a lot of cloud computing and things like that so you know siri will continue to get better but that's one of the few things that i think we have a lock on uh everything else like you like you said does seem to be visually uh, oriented uh vision oriented and like you know augmented reality is a big push by by tim cook so you know i think we're going to continue to see things like that yeah and you know um not to poo poo apple it just it seems this go around things were just so much more focused on the visual, and uh, I don't know if there's any practical applications for the blind that augmented reality. I don't know if that could help with us better understanding the layouts, the buildings, or anything. Uh, maybe somebody will come up with something where augmented reality uh, will be useful. I know uh, augmented reality was big, real big in that Pokemon Go that you were playing, right, Ed? Oh, absolutely, man. <laughs> I was running around Central Park, like, getting me some Pokemon. <laughs> I heard they had to put that sign on the subways to stay off the tracks for Pokemons just for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. You don't have to worry about me jumping on the tracks to try and capture a Pokemon. I worry about falling off the damn platform sometimes. But uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not jumping on those damn tracks. Yeah, well, I took Long Island Railroad for the first time in a few years the other night, and yeah, I could, I could see. I'll tell you what, I was not very comfortable until a sighted person was leading me around, letting me know where the tracks were. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that is an well, uncomfortable still, feeling. Yeah, you know, we have, you know, where were you? Which station were you at? Uh, 61st Street uh, in uh, uh, Woodside. Oh, okay. All right. Well, they, they, they do have the, uh, the yellow uh, edge uh, print, uh, bump bumps on that on those platforms but uh out by me here in suffolk county long island my platform is 40 feet in the air and does not have any edge uh tactile edge uh uh notifiers. why should so they it's, why should they blind yeah, people exactly. in safety would definitely be an afterthought in suffolk county absolutely <laughs> isn't their motto the less blind people the better <laughs> the less blind people the less tax dollars they have to spend i guess i don't know but it really is annoying <laughs> Yeah, you know, we, we got an interesting email uh, from Greg, uh, and I apologize, Greg, I didn't catch your last name on the email, but... Uh, Being he, who? Greg Porch? <laughs> <laughs> Greg Porch? Who's Greg Porch? That's who That's who sent the email. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't catch his last name. I looked at the signature and just said Greg, so... Okay. But uh, anyway, do you want to read the email, or do you have it? 
no. no I thought you were reading. Oh, you know. <laughs> well, I'm going to paraphrase. You know me. I don't know how to read. But Okay. Now, Greg mentioned, you know, my favorite app, Downcast. And, uh, you know, he uh, sent in an email basically stating that uh, he, like many people, updated the 10.3 with Downcast and has been having several issues with the app crashing. But one thing he did find to be a little useful was uh, when using his playlists, if he used the split finger gesture uh, tap, that seemed to work much better than scrolling through and flicking through uh, your shows and it didn't crash as much, but he was still reporting some crashing. So, you know, until, uh, mm-hmm. get, yeah, yeah. So until you hear our next guest, uh, I, I think, you know, this is the best thing you could do is try to use that split finger gesture. Yeah. Well, I know that you, uh, I know you've been very disappointed with downcast with, with the 10.3 update and it not working well. And you have a lot vested in that application and you, you basically did a lot of searching to find something and, you know, we're lucky enough that the app that you have uh, dove all in on, um, we were actually able to get the developer to come on and talk to us. Why don't you tell, t- tell our listeners about it? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I was looking uh, for a solution. I guess, you know, you could say when there's a problem, I do look for a solution and I will search until I find one. And uh, a couple people had emailed in and suggested why not give Eyecatcher a try and, uh I gave it a try and just absolutely loved it once I, I played around with it and tested it out for a few days and decided to reach out to Joe, the developer. I think uh, when a lot of you hear Joe speak and hear his passion for developing Eyecatcher, that uh, it's probably going to become your podcast player of choice. I know it's mine. Yeah, good. You know, you know, it was great. It was great working with it, getting a chance to see it and everything. And, uh, um, you know, it does do the one feature I was really looking for, with the ability to download other stuff, uh, like MP3 files and things through Dropbox. And, uh, you know, after speaking with Joe Graff, we were able to get that information from him, and uh, it worked out well. So, you know, why don't we bring Joe on and let him tell us about his, uh, his, his, his pet project. Let's head out to California. Now we'd like to welcome in a guest that, I'm very excited to talk to because he's the creator of an app that I just recently discovered called Eyecatcher. How you doing today, Joe Graff? I'm good. How are you? Hey, Joe. Welcome to iAccessVO. Good to have you on the program. It's good to be here. Thanks. Now, we're going to go back to the beginning, Joe. Uh, what made you come up with the idea for Eyecatcher? Uh, well, I had started listening to podcasts in like 2005 with an iPod mini and once the iPhone came out and then people started to actually develop for it, there was a, somebody had created the, the app podcaster and I had tinkered with that one. And, you know, you, as a developer, you just want to build your own stuff. So there was some shortcomings and, you know, everybody does stuff a little bit differently. So it's like, you know, I'm going to make my own. And so that's, you know, spent a few months, put something together and finally got it out on the store in like March of 2011. Yeah, I don't even know if podcasters still around. So uh, that was one I never played around with. Did you ever play around with that one, Ed? No, no. Actually, my first entree into listening to podcasts was was actually with the native podcast app by Apple. So, but uh, you know, I you know I've done development development in the past myself, uh, Joe, and uh, you know it's a lot of work, and you release that first. Uh, you know that first product or that first version, and then, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, debugging and stuff, even after that, and beta testing before that. So, you know, how has iCatcher changed from your initial release? <laughs> oh, let's see. The first release, I almost put it out without the ability to search, like <laughs> any sort of podcast, you know, directory, because I'm only building what I know how to build and what I knew was available. Um. But then, like, the week before, I was, like, going to release it. I'm like, oh, I just figured it out. Apple has a iTunes API that is public, like, XML. And so that's basically what it uses from from that day forward. But <clears throat> as far as, it's, as much as it's changed, I've just added so many features, and the interface has changed just dramatically. So be- before you d- you actually added the search feature, how w- how was it going to work? Was it just going to work by importing like an RSS feed? Right, you'd have to add manually. But um, when you don't have the things that you need, it kind of creates innovation. 
Mm-hmm. And so what I was doing was at the time you could put in like the the Safari browser within an app. So I was like, well, I wonder if I could catch if the user taps the RSS link because so many podcasters and stuff would put a link on their website. So if they tapped it, I could intercept that and pop up an alert that says, hey, is this a podcast? And then you could hit the button and just add it. So within the app, when you're trying to add a feed or something, when you press the little plus button in the upper left corner, one of the options is browse the web. So from the first you know, get-go, that's what I had was, all right, browse the web, go to like Twit TV or something and find the podcast you want, tap the link, and it would pop up saying, hey, is this a podcast? You know, yes, it is. Okay, let's go ahead and, you know, import it. Good, good. So that, is that how you came up with the initial name, Eyecatcher, from the catching the uh, the apps, uh, like the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, I tried a few different ideas like okay what sounds right and and then downcast had come out like a few months before i think it was like november of the prior year um but that wasn't even on my mind like download but it was you know you're catching stuff it's a you know you got a pod catcher um podcast it's like how about eye catcher like yeah, it's Why a catchy. Not? It's a catchy name, you know. Gee, I wonder <laughs> where. I wonder where they got the idea for the name Overcast. <laughs> right. It's like Overcast. Well, you also had. They had a down over. <laughs> downcast, Overcast, Upcast. Eye Catcher, and then you got Instacast. You can... Yeah. So, um, you yeah, know, Downcast, as a lot of us know, uh, has not been updated in a while, and, and you know, hopefully it will be. But uh, so I started to look for a new podcast player app so I wasn't left out in the wind and uh, was a very you know people had shot over to me uh, in a couple of the blind tech lists uh, eye catcher that I should check it out that it was fully voiceover accessible and it works phenomenally well with voiceover how did you first become aware of voiceover though I think I got lucky with that one because again releasing it March 2011 it's like within a week um, somebody from Apple Viz uh, contacted me and was like, hey, can you make this thing voiceover? And they sent me some reference material, and I was able to... It was pretty easy, because they're like, oh, you're just putting labels and making sure that stuff has a proper label. And that was really all I had to do at the time. But once once I started doing that, because it was so early on, it was kind of easy to just keep it up. And then I, I get a friendly reminder from people when I, when I don't have it proper. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know people, people in the voiceover world can... Uh... They could be a, a little, uh, and me especially, <laughs> they, we could be a little opinionated, I guess, is a good way of putting it. And uh, yeah, so now speaking with you, I've, I've learned, you know, maybe slow things down, you know, developers, you know, you're one person doing all of this and everything. And, uh, you know, you've got, uh, you know, obviously a, a full-time job and a family and a life. And, uh, you know, sometimes things break and you just got to give developers like yourself a little time to get things updated at all. I'm not letting Grubhub off the hook because they're a gigantic company. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Joe, when you, uh, when, you, when you do the development and everything, so did you have to become very proficient at voiceover at this stage to, uh, to, to check this? Because you know, I think you, you're basically doing the development on your own, aren't you? Right. I'm doing the development on my own. I do have beta testers, uh, which is nice to have people that, you know, you're not paying anybody. It's just here you get to be a beta tester and let me know if something breaks. Basically, I don't, I don't give them like a checklist or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, all the development is, I've done all the coding. Um, have to build pretty much all the graphics, other than buying some graphics from, I don't know, Icon Factory or wherever else. Uh, the icon itself is mine. But yeah, it's just me developing. Uh, as far as the voiceover particulars, like I said, it was just initially, oh, this thing is a button, and you typed in the title. But then there's this other little piece that Apple puts out there. It says accessibility label, and it might say button one or something. So you're like, oh, no, that's I need to put something that's more descriptive. Uh, but then as we I was discussing with Brian about when you're swiping an eye catcher over the episodes, you're, it kind of tells you, like, here's the title. Um, this episode is played, if it was played. Uh, or it has bookmarks, or it'll say, you know, this episode has audio, or this episode has video. Uh, and then you swipe again, and you're going to see, like, episode options and some other items. Those things were done in, in particular for voiceover users because of how 
Xcode, uh, you know, the development environment for iOS. When you stick labels and things on a little thing that you're building, when VoiceOver wants to read it, if every little thing was VoiceOver accessible, uh, you'd kind of have to make sure somehow that they were reading them in order. So instead, you're like, you know what? I'm going to disable most of those. And I'm just going to make one custom one, and I'm going to put it on the title, and that's which that's what you get in iCatcher when it's like reading a, a little bit longer description. In yeah. addition to, okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, I've noticed that in, in using the app, as I've, I told you earlier, uh, that uh, you know it's great because you just flick you know voiceover focus onto an episode, and then it will read. Uh, everything you know in the order that it's set and it, you know it's fantastic you know instead of having to flick from one thing to another thing to have it you know read each thing individually so it it does give you a lot of great information and everything uh which is it's got a, a excellent design there and everything so um now i believe that your podcast app sh- came out shortly before apple all of a sudden launched their own podcasting app how did that affect you or did it not <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think it probably affected everyone. I've had like ups and downs with my app as far as sales. So I think the biggest hit wasn't necessarily the podcast app. Uh, maybe because that was so long ago. <laughs> it was too early on. And again, not as many people are, were aware of podcasting in you know, 2012. Uh, the bigger hit was probably Overcast. But... Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, so when Overcast came out, you took a, a bigger hit from them. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. And it's just more and more apps that would come out. But when you have um, – that one had a little more steam behind it. Um, so, again, podcasting, that people that listen to podcasts, it's not as big as – or it wasn't as big. It's getting bigger now. So if you're coming new to podcasts, you're going to either choose the podcast app or you're going to find one that's free first. And typically the people, I think, that come to my app are like – I need something that gives me more options and like, Oh, here's one that has a ton of options. Yeah. Well, you were telling me earlier that, uh, you, uh, you had, had so I thought I subscribed to a lot of podcasts at 130, but you told me you've got one beta tester. How many podcasts are they subscribed to when the app actually supports it? Uh, he's got over 1400. <laughs> wow. And what do you think That's, about that? that- no, I, I thought you were crazy with the amount of you try to listen to, Brian. That, that's insane. <laughs> but I do know one thing, Brian. You couldn't do that with Overcast because it wouldn't let you have 1,400 uh, podcasts in there, would it? <laughs> no, they, they didn't even want to support, you know, like I said, I have no idea what's going on. I can't get the app to even load. Uh, I gave up on it once I started using iCatcher. I, I, stay off my phone, Overcast. And I've, <laughs> I've been very happy. I've actually been importing uh, all of my episodes that I want to keep from uh, Downcast, which uh, I've been using, uh, you know, iTunes and the uh, just swapping. It's uh, it's quite a process, but uh, it'll be great to have everything in iCatcher, uh, and I hope we'll finish that within the next week or so. Are you able to import import like media files, like MP3 files from, say, Dropbox or Google Drive or something into the iCatcher uh, application, uh, Joe? You can import files, and I think I did it before most of the other podcast apps. But you can use the traditional iTunes file sharing feature where you just select the app, and that's a little bit more cumbersome. Uh, what you can do is on the settings tab, there's like a import media and then it'll list like, here's the, the, the media that I see that you have copied over to the app. But then there's an option that says import others. I think I may have messed up the name of that, but basically you tap it and iOS nine and 10, I believe it is gives you that option. Like, Hey, if this app says it's a data provider, such as Dropbox, um, iCloud drive, um, Microsoft's Cloud Drive, whatever they're calling it now. Uh, you can tap that. It'll launch their own little sheet. You can select the file, hit the button, and it will copy that file to the same folder that you would if it was doing the iTunes file sharing. Oh, so it's great. still 
it's still one at a time, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah. But that's fine because that's that's the way it is. Uh, that's what I have been doing with Downcast, and that was the major feature that had me uh, linked to that. But if I can do that in iCatcher, I'm happy because uh, you know I like to uh, download um, you know audio described movies that are in MP3 format, and uh, I like to listen to the show as it's being edited before it's released for iAccessVO. So I will actually download the uh, the wave files in the different segments and listen to them and things like that, trying to pick up little little things that need to be edited out or fixed and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a nice workflow uh, item for me. So if I can do that in iCatcher, all the better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, the uh, Apple earbuds, the ones that come with the phone, they've got some pretty uh, neat features that work specifically with iCatcher. So tell us, tell the listeners uh, about some of those features that you could do uh, with the Apple earbuds. All right. Well, so if you have the Apple, let's see, iPhone, excuse me, <laughs> earbuds, or you can do this with other devices that support Next, Previous, and some of these other similar features. In the settings tab under playback and controls, you can enable some of these like remote control playback speed, next previous episode on remote fast forward rewind, remote mark as played, pause on volume down, bookmark volume toggle. I know those may be a little cryptic. So if we go with the remote control playback speed, so if you have that enabled, so let's say you're listening and it's like, okay, I need to speed this up, you would just, let's see. Hold on a second. Sure. <laughs> yeah, thinking with the headphones, you would pause and then you would push the, the little pause where it clicks. You can push it twice, go click, click. Uh, and I don't know what exactly that does normally, but in this, in my app, that will increase the speed. And if you triple click, then it decreases the speed. Yeah, that's pretty. And I know that'll be a very popular feature, uh, you know, even with, with the blind community, because a lot of us do listen to things at faster playback speed. Uh, Ed, what speed are you listening to our show at? <laughs> well, when, when I listen to our show, I listen at, at one time speed. But normally I do 1.5. Um, 2.0 is a little too much for me. And I believe you told me that iCatcher has a 1.75 speed, which, yes. I, which is awesome. Yeah. 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 That was nice when Apple added that. Because I don't do any of the low-level audio stuff. I'm just using the APIs that are given to me from Apple. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't know that was given to you from Apple. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's that's a great feature, uh, you know, being able to change that while listening to a show. Because sometimes you want to speed things up and sometimes you want to slow things down. So if you do... Uh, use the app listening with earbuds. That's a, a really cool feature that I've never seen before. Yeah, there might be another app that does that. I'm not sure now, but if you do that same kind of thing where you do the double click, excuse me, with the Apple earbuds, mm -hmm. um, if you do the double click and hold, that's the same thing as it telling it to like fast forward, like you can hear it fast forwarding. Yeah. So in, in my app, you you enable that feature that says just go to the next or previous episode. If that's enabled, then when you do that, it'll just jump to the next episode in the playlist. Okay. If if you do the triple click and hold, then it'll go to the previous episode. You know, I was just thinking actually, there's another feature that might be helpful for a lot of users that's actually off by default. Uh, but I find that I use it all the time now, or I should say every night, because if you go to settings, playback, and sleep timer. I have a feature down there for auto sleep timer, or excuse me, auto start sleep timer. So if you turn that on, the default is like from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. So what will happen is let's say you're listening to a podcast. Um, I should say if you start listening to a podcast after that time, it automatically kicks in the sleep timer. In my case, I have it set to 15 minutes, which is the default. So after 15 minutes, it'll just it'll basically fade out and stop. Because too often, you know, you get someone emailing and saying, can you do something? Because I fell asleep and I don't remember what I listened to because it went through my entire playlist while I was sleeping. <laughs> and like, yeah, I think I could do, do better than just having a sleep timer. Let's create this auto sleep timer so it'll kick in automatically. And you'll get an alert that pops up. It'll say sleep timer started 15 minutes. And, you know, if you have an iPhone 6, uh, let's see, 6S, I think is the one that has the force touch. So when you force touch, like, on a, 
a notification or earlier devices if you swipe and you hit view. Basically, if you get more options on the notification that comes on your screen, yeah, I give you the option to like change that sleep timer amount from like five, fifteen, or thirty minutes, or just cancel it. Say you know, I don't know, just disable that. That's pretty. But cool. anyway, I th- yeah, go ahead. That, no, that's, I was just saying that was pretty cool, and uh, you know, I actually have it where I disabled in my playlist uh, automatically play next episodes. <laughs> just in well, for when I fall asleep, I don't want it going through every episode in the playlist. Uh, so yeah, that's that, that's my uh, I guess sleep timer is not to play the next episode automatically. <laughs> but and then if if you do have it set to where you don't want it to go to the next episode and you're listening to an episode and it finishes but you know there's still more in the playlist just hit play on your headphones and it should just grab the next episode oh, cool. of the list and start playing I, you know there's so many options and that's probably one of my if you see someone putting a review they're like ah oh, it's a great app but there's like a million settings there's too many like well that's <laughs> if why. you want to have yeah. fine game control you you got to have a bunch of settings and I agree, it, it's a little too much. Um, and one of these days, I gotta add search to the settings, but it, it's not as easy as it as it sounds. No, but the way it's designed, you know, you have individual buttons where you go in, and you know, it has the, it's it's very well designed. So, you know, it's not like it's just this long list of setting after setting. You know, you, you have uh, uh, settings for playback, and you you know, it says playback, and you one finger a voiceover user, and one finger double taps, and then you have. All the playback settings in that screen, and uh, you know, I think you might have a playlist uh, screen option as well. And, and uh, I like the way it's designed. I mean, the design, it, it's very compact for a voiceover user, so I do like it. it. You know what the key is, Brian, is you have a you have a beautiful feature-rich application. Um, so you know what? You're getting something that you're paying for, which is awesome. So a lot of times you, you go out and you buy these apps, and they just... You know, they don't deliver half of what they promise. And here you have something that gives you lots of options. You can use them if you want to or just set the basics up, and, and it works. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a, a ton of settings, uh, which is great. You know, and that's, you know, a lot of people that listen to podcasts like myself love customization. And there's just a ton of, of features where you can select playlist features or individual podcast features. And uh, nothing, uh, you know, about... Um, Nothing short there and everything. What about uh, future updates? Uh, anything that you could mention that might uh, be coming to the app feature-wise down the road? You know, before we get to that, I just want to mention that one of the features, I don't think anybody else has this yet, is under the settings and download options. I do have it. So let's say you download on Wi-Fi because you don't want to use all your cellular data. I do have an approved Wi-Fi networks so that if you add in either your current network, which it has that option, then it's not going to automatically start downloading if you had it set up that way, unless it's on one of those networks that you said that you wanted it to. So I just wanted to point that out. That's just one of those that I don't think anybody else has. No, that could be pretty cool because a lot of times some people have their phones set up where just to automatically join Wi-Fi networks, and you probably don't want, you know, if you're just at some random place and you connected and you don't want to start doing your downloads there and then you might be off the network yeah so that that's a really cool feature and well then there's the uh if you have like a MiFi or you're using some hotspot on your phone well that's still using cellular so you don't want that to auto download on that either so so that was fortunate that there was an api in there that you could actually grab like what is the user currently what's the name of the wi-fi network that they're currently connected to uh, and Apple almost removed that, and, and I think enough people were like, hey, we need that. And so they had to keep it in there, but they haven't replaced it with anything equivalent. So hopefully it doesn't go away. As far as uh, what's coming up, uh, I do have like a bug fix coming, fix, you know, for those 1,400 podcast users. <laughs> and by that, I mean the ones that are subscribed to 1,400 plus podcasts. Uh, I do support the Apple Watch, so right now, if you're using it, it, it's pretty much just to control the playback of the app, um, of the app. But I am going to be adding the local playback because people have been asking. At least the ones that have watches, all five of them, they want to transfer the files to the watch, and then list it on there because they're like, you know what? When you're running, I just want my watch. Leave my phone at home. Okay, that's fine. So I got that working. Got a beta tester that was really wanting to do that. So I was like, hey, you want a beta test? had some good ideas, so we've got that all working. 
And after that, let's see, I'm going to be adding some higher playback speeds. Again, with iOS 10 and 9, they seems like they made their... Uh, made that feature so that you could use a little more fine grain. So I'm adding a little slider if you want that option to go from like, you know, 0.5 all the way up to 2.5. Oh, that's uh, cool. cause, Yeah, I had initially been stopping at 2 because anything after that really didn't sound right. But recently I was like, you know, I need to, let's just check that out again. I was like, actually, you know, I can listen to some of these podcasts just at 2.25 and 2.5 it's a little harder, but uh, yeah. yeah. So those will be coming when I get around to finishing it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we know. Like I said, uh, what? Uh, now are you looking for any beta testers uh, for voiceover, or are you good uh, with your t- with what you have currently? Uh, you know, if somebody wants to beta test, uh, basically early access to whatever I'm working on, they can certainly contact me through the. I just say go into the app and hit the help tab and uh, let's see. There's send questions or feedback is what it's labeled. And you could just say, hey, I just wanted to see if I can become a beta tester. And oh, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. There's no, again, I'm I'm not expecting anything from you. As yeah. long as you're not expecting anything either. It's just like if you're someone who just wants to be on the cutting edge, like I just want to see what's coming. Uh, or if they really have a problem with the app because they have some voiceover piece that's like, ah, this could be better. So I will say that that whole episode piece where you swipe and it kind of lists off the episode, when I started doing that, I don't, I really don't recall who reached out and who helped at, at that point. But I did have some input where like, yeah, you know, if you could put this at the end or if you could change that, yeah. that was helpful. Yeah, yeah no. any input is good, good input. Yeah, no, the order it currently comes up is is definitely good and everything, uh, you know. So, but now Ed, uh, we've got some exciting news for the listeners because we are going to have the second iAccess VO contest, Ed. Yeah, you t- you gave me that news earlier when I was on a train coming home from work. So why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, so uh, Joe has been kind enough; he's going to give us uh, three copies of iCatcher to give away to. A- a couple of lucky listeners, and uh, what we're asking you to do is retweet uh, our next two episodes, uh, repost it on your social networks with Facebook, and we will enter you into the contest by retweeting. You could retweet three times a day or post uh, on our Facebook page, share our Facebook post three times a day, and you'll be entered, and uh, we'll be running this contest for a month, and then Ed and I will do the uh, live uh, picking of the winners a month from now. <laughs> With our random number uh, selector, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All All right. Right. That was pretty cool. I got to, I remember last time I got to pick the numbers, so... Uh, That's right. That was, right. was kind of cool, but uh, yeah, so this is exciting, and uh, so, uh, get out there and share this episode as of now. Do you have any other applications that, that you have released yet, or... Uh, well, the first one I released was just a simple little blackjack game, and I've since retired that one, but I had come out with a different version called like, iBlackjack HD for the uh, iPad. Mm-hmm. So that's the one that currently lives out there, and actually I do have a bundle, because why not bundle blackjack with iCatcher? So for the same price as iCatcher, you get iCatcher and blackjack. I know, I'm like, wait a minute, your voiceover... Um, I did actually add a voiceover support for Blackjack. Uh, it, I was playing with it earlier today, and I was like, let me make sure, how well does this work for voiceover? It could probably be a little bit better, but, you know, it's reading like, you know, two of clubs, you have da-da-da-da-da, you know. It goes a little too quick once the, the hand's over. You're like, wait a minute, who won? Oh, cool. Uh, just, just, <clears throat> just assume the house won, okay? <laughs> That's usually how it works. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So, awesome. Well, that's cool. Well, this, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the app, and uh, you know, it's, it's great that I, I. It's funny. You know, I don't even remember who mentioned to me to check out. I had a couple of people mentioned through Twitter that uh, 
we should be checking out Eyecatcher. And I, I know there's people in the blind community. I'll have to go back and check uh, who mentioned it to me. And uh, I was up and running and a big fan of it immediately. And uh, it's in my doc. So uh, there there was another podcast app that was there previously, but that, that one's been removed. And, uh, there, but, uh, All right, perfect. But Joe, this was a real tw- treat for, for, for us. And... Uh, we think uh, you're probably going to be hearing from a lot of blind people uh, because we do love our podcast. Thanks again. You're listening to Brian and Ed on iAccess VO. I tell you, Ed, he may go by Joe is a nerd, but I love Joe because I am loving me my eye catcher. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I tell you, that's a great Twitter handle, man. At Joe is a nerd. <laughs> Since we've done the interview, did you look to see if Ed is a nerd is available? Uh, no. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's kind of a. I wonder, is a nerd dot com is that available? Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, a lot of nerds out ner- there. Yep, the whole nerd craze I think uh, really peaked what, but in the mid to late eighties with uh, um, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Yep, Revenge of the Nerds. Well, dude, they, they had the great line where at the end of the movie, a guy says he hopes that he can live in a world one day where nerd persecution comes to an end. And uh, I think we're living in that world now because the nerds are definitely ruling the asylum. Well, if they're not ruling the asylum, they certainly have a lot of coin going on in uh, here, a lot of cha-ching. <laughs> That's true. The nerds have won. The jocks have lost. But uh, although the professional jocks seem to be doing pretty good these days, yeah, yeah, they're, they're not doing too badly in their bank accounts either. So uh, yes. cool, awesome. But uh, no, great app. I'm looking forward to uh, getting into it and porting over all my uh, my stuff to it, and uh, and not having to worry about whether or not I can upgrade to uh, iOS 10.3 without losing all my podcasts. Well, here's my question to you, Ed. Can you be entered into the contest or not? No. Okay. I think that would be a conflict of interest. That's true. That's true. And I already have the app, so but we are going to be giving away three free cap copies. Copies or cappies? <laughs> copies. Copies. That's what I thought. Copies of Eyecatcher. And the way to get into the contest, there's two ways you can get in the contest. Uh, one way is by retweeting any of our tweets uh, mentioning this show with our guest, uh, Joe is a nerd from iCatcher, or by retweeting anything about our next episode, because the contest will run for a month. Uh, Ed, you want to tell them the other way they could... Uh yeah, so okay, so you know this episode is go- is episode forty. So you can retweet uh, any any time uh, it's posted up there on Twitter promoting uh, the show, uh, episode forty or the next episode forty one, and the same goes for Facebook, which which is at iAccessVO on Facebook. So it's the same Twitter handle, uh, and you can actually do a search on Facebook to find our Facebook page. And do the same thing. So if you retweet any of our posts about the show when we're promoting it, uh, we will enter your name into a uh, a spreadsheet. Uh, you can do up to three three uh, retweets or three uh, shares and be entered three times. And then we'll do like we did uh, when we did the big blind square contest last year. We'll get the random uh, uh, number generator out and uh, ge- generate the numbers. And uh, you pick a number. And we'll go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's exciting. You know, I'm excited. Uh, it was fantastic of Joe to help us with this and, and give us a couple codes to to give uh, the gift of sound and podcasts to. Yeah, I think Joe's only concern is that, you know, our, our, our few listeners in Japan are not eligible because I believe he said that the iTunes store in Japan does not allow him to. To list the show, uh, to list his app uh, in the Japan uh, App Store. Yeah, so sorry, Japanese customers or listeners, <laughs> they're listeners to us. Uh, you're SOL uh, on this one, but uh, we'll make it up to you down the road. <laughs> there you go. Our two China listeners, though, they they could definitely get in. Uh, well, we have more than two two listeners from China, but yes, okay, not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Ed, it's that time of the show. What time is that, Brian? It's time to tell you what's pissing off Brian now. You know, we really got to get some theme music for this part of the segment. 
<laughs> dum, da, dum, dum. That, hey, there you go. Something along those lines would be great. But uh, I thought, you know, when I was putting the outline together for this show, I was thinking, uh, you know, it's been a good run. There's nothing that's pissing me off because I got it all out during my meltdown. But, uh, you know, sure enough, something else came up. And uh, I think this is one that a lot of people could get on board with that pisses them off. When you get a push notification and it's something interesting, uh, and you know, do a one finger double tap to open the article and read it, and it gives you the first paragraph, and it says to continue reading this article, go here to another website or some other place. Drives me insane, Ed. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind if it takes me to another site because a lot of times, what I'll do in that situation, I'll open it up in Safari. Uh, you'll use the more now, to do that. You don't mind if what it takes bothers you there. Me is that when I have to read. You know, a paragraph and a half or two paragraphs, and then there's a next button, and then I, I got to go through all the advertising. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. Yes, so that, that, feel my that's pain. super annoying, yes. Very annoying. I you know, mean... Especially, especially when they give you the title with clickbait, like, ah, oh, here are the 12, the 12 uh, best places to vacation in America or something yes. like that. And, and every number you got to click next to go to a new section on it, and you got to you got to scroll through all these advertisements. Oh, I give up on those now. And and you know what drives me nuts on these is you know the ones that uh, they they give you like just a paragraph at a time, and 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 then it takes you to another site, and that site you can't find the freaking article on that site because it's so right. poorly you designed. Finish it. You can never yeah. finish the article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> definitely very unfulfilling and unsatisfying, and a lot of uns. And drives me just absolutely bonkers. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's along the lines of when you start reading it and it's then, then it takes you to that site and you got to go there and you got to do all the manual pushing to get there. And then you have to read the same opening paragraph and a half again. That drives me insane too. Well, I know you're a big Apple News guy. So do you, do you find that on Apple News a lot? Not on Apple News a lot. I do find it in uh, my RSS reader, Newsify, a lot of the times where I'll start reading it and it'll only be like a truncated article. And then I have to go back to the top and do a one finger double tap on the subject. And then the next screen, there's the full article. It just drives me insane. I see this a lot on Facebook. You know, if if you get an article from like Forbes, Forbes magazine or something like that, you know, you're constantly trying to get through it. And you know what? It's not worth the effort. I just, I just bail on it quickly now. Yeah. Yeah. I I get frustrated and I, you know, lose uh, interest real quick as well. And, uh, you know, one thing I'm looking forward to, because like, you know, you and I have yet to update to 10.3 is I'm kind of curious because I'm a big fan of Apple News. And according to Apple News, I've never not once read a story because every article still says unread. (laughs) Pretty funny. Apple can't even get that straight in their own news app. There you go. I mean, uh, I mean, so so even when you read it, it still shows unread. Yes. Like I went out the articles I send. And the other thing, if you do a one finger double tap on an article and you read the article and at the bottom, it has the share tools. If you go to share from the bottom there, it will send the next article, not the one you're reading. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. It's the, the news uh, section has a, a, a lot to, to be desired. So in other words, for me to share an article with you, I have to back out of the article and use the actions menu on the article, which that works well. And then uh, do the share from there and everything. So, but it's funny that they can't get this right in their own app. It really makes you question Apple sometimes. There you go. So, but uh, yeah, you know, this is uh, I think this is the first show we're doing since uh, March Madness ended. So, I think we have some uh, some news and some winners to announce, don't we? Yeah, you know, it's funny because I I don't even realize who won the March. Gonzaga win it all. Uh, no. <laughs> was it? Oh, was it North Carolina? North Carolina. Okay, well, dude, that shows you how much I care about basketball. Hey, at least I knew that one of the teams that was in it. But uh, yeah, you know, we had a actual guest of the podcast win the NCAA I Access VO all or almost all blind twenty pickem. That's it. Yes, our our good friend Randy Myers, who is the uh, mayor uh, of I Access VO. No, he's not the mayor. He's the official mayor. He's he's the official mayor of the podcast. Oh, okay. But what yeah. what town is that, Brian? Because I know you love the Sheboygan same. Falls, not to be confused no. with Sheboygan. <laughs> so congratulations to Randy for uh, winning the contest. And uh, let's see, he picked forty five games correct, 
for a total of, I think that was 128 or 124 points. Pretty yeah, impressive. 24 points to Randy. Yeah, and, uh, and our second winner was a woman. Uh, we had Denise come in second place. Actually, uh, I think it was Sirhan that came in second place. Uh, <laughs> let me see. I'm looking at your show notes. <laughs> yeah. And it was Sirhan who came in second. And Denise Serena was in third Swag. place. Serena. Serena. Pardon me, Serena. So, so we had two women finish in the top three. Yeah, Serena Swag came in. She had 38 correct and uh, for a score of 115 points. And you're right. Third place was Denise. She had 38 correct picks for a score of 110. You know, when I, I didn't hear either of our names up there. <laughs> no, we weren't up there. We were we were we were kind of in the the middle of the pack, maybe <laughs> just over the middle of the pack. So what do we have? 19, 19 participants. So uh, you came in 11th. And I came in hey, 12. I got as many games right as the second place finisher, 38. <laughs> the only problem yeah, is I got it right very one. early. <laughs> you get 61 points. Difference. Oh, that's that's not even double. I, that's pretty bad. 60. I can't imagine anybody did worse than 61 points. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Thanks. Good lead in. So uh, what did I have? I had 57 points. So I had four worse than you with 35 correct picks. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so. My problem is, you know, my Wildcats got knocked out early. I mean, they didn't even make it to the Sweet 16. So once that happened, you know, my bracket was 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 for not. You know, it was just you know just not going to happen. <laughs> well, it stinks because I was so close to uh, picking my Gators uh, over your 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 Villanova guys, but I just didn't have the uh, Wavos Ranchos or whatever those are called. What <laughs> 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 are those eggs? <laughs> cojones. Oh, cojones! Yes. What did I say? One <laughs> way. I, I don't even know that was a Spanish phrase that I used. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 you know, you know, we have, you know, Spain. Our listeners from Spain are in the top ten of our countries. You know, we think you just you just lost them. <laughs> hey, my Spanish needs a little work, but I can't say uno cerveza por favor. No. Okay. <laughs> you know what that means. Give me another beer. <laughs> and the other phrase I learned when I was in Spain was, uh, Donde esta el baño? Uh, trying to find the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Yes, yes. Because okay. after you have a beer, you may need the bathroom. So do you... Uh, usually the case. Yes. You know what they say about beer? You only rent it. That's what I've heard. Yeah. That's what I've heard. It's a favorite, famous Archie Bunker line uh, from uh, All in the Family. Oh, Archie Bunker <laughs> said that? Uh, I remember uh, he used to say that all the time. You don't, you, you don't, you don't, you don't buy it. You rent it. <laughs> so, I didn't know if it was from that long ago. Yep. So uh, I'll tell you, Brian. I saw something really interesting came out about three days ago. Um, there's a new app on the iPad, which I think I've been looking for this and waiting for this for a long time. Um, is a good typing tutor application for the iPad. On iOS, and um, I think this is something great. I think it's something that most parents who have kids that, if you have an iPad and you have a Bluetooth keyboard, I think they should get Talking Typer for four dollars and ninety nine cents, put out by the American Printing House. And this is something I think could really help a lot of uh, low vision and blind students learn how to type correctly. Yeah, no, you know, and uh, this is not something I would use because. I am the world's greatest typer, according to man. Uh, but I do have lots of students who I'm, I'm looking forward to recommending this to, who I think will find it quite useful. And this is available for iOS for the iPhone as well as the iPad. So uh, right, as long as you as long as you can hook up a keyboard with your with your iOS device, uh, you can use typing, uh, talking typer, and uh, and uh, let's hope that. Uh, these uh, young people and students can uh, get in there and be learn to be more proficient. Because you know, I find a lot of the the, the kids that I teach, and you know, and we run a program where I work where we teach uh, uh, tweens, uh, ten to fourteen, sometimes fifteen year olds, and you know, they come in, and especially if they're low vision, they're just they just hunt and peck on uh, on the screen uh, on the keyboard. You know, they're just uh, they're just banging away on the keyboard. They're you know, they're barely they're barely breaking above you know twelve to fifteen words a minute. And, um, you know, we, we try to 
you know, point them in the right direction for learning how to type correctly. But the, our main emphasis is working with the assistive technology. Um, but it would be so much easier and they'll, they'll be so much more proficient if they would just learn proper keyboarding technique. You know, it's funny, Ed, because we started the show talking about me banging away on the keyboard and uh, that definitely did not help my typing. <laughs> No, it did not. But uh, but we're ending the show uh, banging on a keyboard in a much more productive and efficient manner. That is a good callback, man. I didn't realize that was nice that we tied that together, the front and the back end. That was sometimes, very. Sometimes, sometimes it all works out. It's it's you know you, it's part of the journey. You don't know how you're going to get there, but when you arrive, it's just special. There you go. Number forty, my friend. That's forty up, forty down. What do you think about that? I think it's awesome. I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking for the forward to the big hundo. The big hundo. That won't even. That won't be till sometime next year. You think yeah, we'll make you're it? Have to, well, now that, now that you quit smoking, I feel more confident <laughs> that you'll, you'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I just have to get a, a new headset though. So, uh, well, for now, we are out. You have been listening to IXSVO. If you'd like to contact us with ideas and suggestions for future podcasts, please email us at iaccessvo at gmail.com or visit our website at www.accessquest.org. 